According to Steve, this area is infamous as the site in which a person who was taking people's lives during the 1950s hid the bodies, and he may have lived in this abandoned home nearby, hidden in the woods, published by Steve Ronan in April of 2020. The crew quickly comes across some unsavory items. This is an arrangement of bird skulls. Later, they find another piece of animal anatomy. What type of animal is this spine from, and why is it here? I'm starting to wonder if Norman Bates lived here. One last creepy thing they come across are these little figurines. A skeleton in what looks to be Gollum. Is this actually the house of this 1950s maniac? Why were all these possessions left behind? And what is up with the bird skull trophies? I'd be staying far away from this house. That's creepy. So just birds, huh? I... Bird skulls, or maybe mouse skulls? No, I think it's a, like a rodent. Yeah. Like a family of rodents, but what them right here like this? I have no idea. This live broadcast captures what appears to be an impossible error on camera. Watch the news anchor on the left and see what happens. Here it is again in slow motion in case you missed it. Everything from a hologram to an alien has been proposed, but I guess it could be some kind of camera malfunction. Maybe someone who knows more about cameras can let me know if this is a technical malfunction or not. This Redditor was a skeptic at first, but when he captured this video, he was transformed. Posted to the Ghosts subreddit, Notorious Meseros writes, I heard noises in the garage. I was Snapchatting my fiancé who was at work about it. My fiancé said it's a ghost, and I was an on-the-fence believer. Until this, the footage shows a garage full of stuff, just as the Redditor is saying he's not sure if he believes in ghosts. Something large and heavy falls from a shelf. Some in the comments point out that the object rotates curiously first. Ghosts. I'm not sure if I even believe anymore. But... Yo... Okay... Before falling, others think a rodent could have knocked it over, or some other critter, and still others think that this dude needs to clean his garage. Is that what the ghost is rudely suggesting here? I guess that's still better than dealing with a poltergeist. Something is worth exploring with Tom as he checks out an abandoned mansion that isn't so empty after all. Noises make him want to run away screaming for help, but he also wants to make longer YouTube videos than he normally does, so he pushes onwards. Uh, I'm hoping no one's in here. No one's definitely gonna be in here, so I guess I'll be fine. Wait. What the f Tom doesn't know what to think when a clown walks out and casually turns down the hall without a single glance his way. The clown begins to rock in place, and exploring with Tom actually starts to feel bad for him, which makes no sense in my opinion, because almost no one would approach a stranger dressed as a clown in a busted mansion. Instead of running away to get help, he decides to offer the clown help himself. He never does actually dial a number. Another reason this could be fake. If I call the police for you, you're gonna get some help, okay? You're gonna get some help? I'm gonna call the police for you right now, okay? Suddenly, the clown snaps back to reality and rejects Tom's help with a look that makes him take off. Yo! Yo, I'm gonna help you! In my opinion, this final response is what he should have done all along. The adventurer Abdullah al Bari goes exploring an abandoned building in Saudi Arabia in search of a poltergeist, or a jinn as it's referred to in the area. There are many floors to explore, and each one holds horrors of its own. He turns around to see a mysterious figure that could be a jinn, or more likely the shadow of the banister in front of it. He continues to explore, and the paranormal activity continues to stay one step ahead of him. Ghost keeps throwing objects at him, guiding him in a way towards a final confrontation that he is not ready to witness. Mm. 
He looks up in time to capture a glimpse of a scary round face peering down at him. Tell me what he says to it on his way out. Whatever he says seems to cause him much anger based on what happens next. He quickly leaves before the spirit becomes any more upset. On this night in Florida, a YouTuber named Deer Meat for Dinner is after a different type of wild game than his name would suggest, something much more dangerous. You'll have to go to his channel to see exactly how they managed to land this giant creature, because it's a battle that unfortunately I can't show here, but the end result is just as terrifying as the battle itself. Four grown men struggle to pull a gator aboard, whose jaws are easily as broad as their shoulders. Shoulders. Every square inch is a battle that brings the boat closer to its tipping point. They have to take numerous breaks and for a while it looks like they might lose their grip and let their catch sink to the bottom. The entire time I'm waiting for the gator to snap back to life. As they roll it onto the boat, deer meat for dinner orders everyone away from the tail that could easily snap a leg. Okay. When they get back, the team needs an actual heavy-duty crane to lift the giant beast up and get a final measurement. It's 13 feet and 2 inches long and weighs 1,127 pounds, a new Florida record. I feel like you can really gain a better idea of its size from this angle. The YouTuber is a pretty tall guy and this thing's tail alone comes up all the way to his head. These situations usually end badly. This one, although extremely frightening, ended as well as it could have. It was February 8th, 1977. Tony Kiritsis, a 44-year-old man from Indianapolis, was set to meet about his mortgage with Richard O. Hall, a mortgage broker. Kiritsis wasn't making his payments and a request for an extension was denied. Kiritsis was afraid that Hall would sell his property for the equity. After they'd gone in for the meeting as normal, Kiritsis led Hall out of his office with a barrel held to the base of Hall's neck. This wasn't a spur-of-the-moment plan in action. Kiritsis had thought this through. The barrel was wired to Hall's neck, while the trigger was wired to a ring he wore on his index finger. This meant that Hall would perish if he tried to run away, and he would perish as well if someone tried to retrieve the gun from Kiritsis. Before leaving the office, Kiritsis also phoned the cops to tell them that if they attempted to intervene, Hall's life would end. He then led Hall through the streets of Indianapolis to Kiritsis' apartment, where he held Hall captive for three days. Kiritsis' demands that his debt be eliminated, that he wouldn't be prosecuted for his actions, and that the mortgage company admit fault. This is the scary part that was caught on camera. Kiritsis alerted the news media that Richard Hall would be reading a statement that he, Kiritsis, had written. Hall could barely speak due to the strain from the wire against his neck, so Kiritsis ended up reading the piece himself live on air. His delivery lasted for 23 minutes. When Kiritsis got what he wanted, Hall was released unharmed. Police, of course, prosecuted Kiritsis despite promising otherwise, and he was found not guilty by reason of insanity. He was thrown in a mental institution for 11 years. Later, he apologized for what he had done and said that he never wanted to hurt anyone. Thankfully, he didn't. Is one of America's greatest presidents still roaming the earth? YouTube soul searching things so. She visited President Lincoln's tomb at the Oak Ridge Cemetery in Springfield, Illinois. The place is said to be haunted. Let's see if it is. Right away, Shannon gets a response to her inquiries. Walk up to me. Oh, I heard a noise. Was that you, Mr. Lincoln? I heard a noise. When she asks the spirit to knock. Can you knock on this? There we go. It answers a moment later. A 
Unless there's construction going on inside the tomb, I don't know what would explain the knocking in response. My thoughts are that Lincoln's spirit remains here. Is this the portal to the fiery depths below? The team from Proving Demons thinks so. In this scary video, they're screaming back in the screaming house. As they prepare to communicate with the spirits, the spirits get there first. I'm, I'm not ready for this, but let's just do it. Oh, why is it starting? Shh. Why is it starting? Do you know what I'm about to do? Do you actually know what I'm about to do? The device was triggered and then a tap is heard. And now it's time for a scream with an Aztec whistle. In the distance, they hear something. Sounds like the death whistle. What's that? That sounded like the death whistle. Someone's Are you recording? Someone's outside. Are you recording? Yes. So it's, it's not just playing. Are the spirits screaming back? They switch places to see if they're hearing the same thing. You blow on the top. Purse your lips around the top and blow into it with the megaphone in front of it. On a recording device, they hear the spirit laughing. It's maniacal laughing. Is it laughing at their games? To me, the retaliatory screaming following the whistle does sound like someone is screaming back, but this laughter is the most unsettling part of the investigation, in my opinion. Ghost investigations are even scarier in another language. In this video posted to YouTube in December of 2018, ghost investigators attempt to infiltrate an abandoned house that we can only guess is haunted. At least it looks that way. While exploring the home, the investigator keeps hearing things moving, debris being unsettled, and from the way he's jerking his camera around, it seems he's sensing movements around him. <sighs> What is in this home with him? The place appears as though someone just picked up and left. It's covered with debris and looks like it was abandoned in a state of chaos. While creeping around some upstairs room, the ghost investigators appear to sense someone or something, and that something grabs a hold of him. It's clear he's struggling with a force in the home. He tossles with it and for a moment is dragged backwards by the force before he escapes, racing out of there like his life depends on it, which it probably does. What is going on in this video? Is there any explanation as to what pulled this ghost investigator backwards? It certainly looks real to me. For fear of knowing, don't answer. After all, I don't think 99% of people could handle the answer. What is all? A YouTuber named Flair is left shaken after a fishing trip goes wrong, and you'll never guess how. It's a clear day when they hit the lake, but after a while, dark clouds soon roll in. Flair and his friend are too busy catching fish to notice a sudden shift. That's when nature tells him it's time to go back indoors. His line pops with static. Lightning has struck the lake somewhere and sent a jolt through them both. One of them gets into the water to tie the boat off. A risky move in my opinion. He's out of the water again before lightning strikes twice. I'm glad they both appear to be unharmed. But talk about a close call. A YouTuber named Brady Galloway is exploring an abandoned school all alone when he hears some kind of high-pitched yelp emerge from the other side of a heavy wooden door. It almost sounds like a small dog, even though there is no way that one would be all the way back here. He opens the door, presumably to see if the animal needs help, and waiting on the other side is a creature that was once human. 
In this frame, one eye is large and yellow, while the other is small and red. His neck looks turned at an impossible angle and almost broken. Even when he gets closer, the two eyes remain different colors, and neither of them are natural in any way, as he descends upon Andy with a final blow. TT Mando posted this video in 2008 of his ninja cat chasing a ghost around the living room. In the description, he writes, I have never really been a believer in ghosts, but my wife and I have two cats that used to always go nuts seeing things that we could not see. They would howl at the lights in our dining room and chase things around that were not there. It was really weird, so my one cat starts going nutty one night like he is seeing something. So I decided to try and shoot some footage thinking maybe I can see what they are seeing through a camera. The video begins with the cat watching something floating in the air attentively. What is he staring at? While shooting the footage, the YouTuber switched between regular and night vision mode, which is when the ninja cat started climbing the walls. Literally. You can see that the cat has managed to climb to the top of a dresser and is looking up into the corner of the room. Whatever the cat has its eyes on must be moving all over the place because her gaze darts here and there. The cat then jumps down from its spot on the dresser to a scratching post. And then, as its eyes follow the invisible, it jumps up the wall and lands on the floor. It tries again, jumping up the door and managing to get its claws into the door frame. It looks up into the corner of the ceiling, its head still darting around. The cat hangs there for nearly an entire minute, seemingly enraptured by the ghost or spirit in its sights. Seriously, do you see anything there? Because I sure do. According to the YouTuber, a dot of light moved through the TV once he got his cat down from the door. The YouTuber points out the light that moves from the back to the front of the room. If you watch the video closely, you can see it too. The experience was, apparently, traumatic for this cat owner who now sleeps with the covers over his head. Two adventurous friends are ready to explore an old sewer tunnel, but they don't make it very far before a strange noise makes them turn right around and head back to the light. Where are you going to sit? Did you hear that? Right. They escape the tunnel safely and nothing follows them outside. The obvious answer is that this was some kind of laughing sound effect that they edited in later, but to me it does sound like it was coming from a distance, as if it really was somewhere deeper in the sewer. What happens when the music stops? Published by Yoon Sai Won in May of 2021, this ghost hunter was in such fear for his life that he left all his gear behind. Upon entering this abandoned school, Yoon Sai Won first encounters a haunting sound coming from downstairs. He goes in search of it and seems to at last find it, but there's no one there. Later, he thinks something is stalking him. And his EMF meter starts going crazy. He sets up some motion detectors, which are also triggered. <laughs> After a while, even the creepy music box near the exit starts chiming in. He starts to think many spirits are gathering in the room as all the devices start to go off at once. Fearing for his life, he flees, screaming all the way. <laughs> then he gathers enough courage to go back. The music box is still chiming all the way down the spooky hallway. When he arrives back at the room, he's peering inside when something is thrown from another direction. <laughs> 
It seems his return made the congregated spirits angry. Okay, listen to this Buzz Lightyear toy and tell me what you hear wrong. I am Buzz Lightyear to infinity. It has a deep voice at times, which is strange enough, but the real problem is that his AAA batteries died, people. Ironically, a toy that's based on a movie about toys coming to life appears to have actually come to life itself. The longer he records, the more twisted and deranged the toy becomes. Oh God. The collectible toy belongs to a YouTuber named Joe Bean Videos, and I have little reason to doubt what he says. With that said, Joe Bean Videos doesn't actually show us that the AAA batteries are not working. God. He could have put them in another device to demonstrate that they are drained. Also, I once heard that toys can sometimes hold a small charge even after okay. the batteries have died. Since this video goes on for quite some time, however, I oh. doubt this is what is happening here. This paranormal crew's third visit to this prison did not disappoint. CVS Paranormal enters Dorchester Prison, a criminal facility in which executions have been carried out. In previous investigations of this prison, the team has captured some truly eerie figures on camera, like this one. As the team enters, whispering is heard on the audio. This is a big main entrance where down there is, um, yeah. Big main entrance where down there is, um. A second EVP captures a low growl. Prisoner was in here. Prisoner was in here. This is shortly followed by a door closing or opening. Sounded like a growl or something. Sounded like a growl or something. And scratching noises. This is a big one. Definite noises. This singing is what's really chilling. I, I just heard, I swear I just heard singing. It sounds like it's coming from here as well. Soldier. Oh! But it's when you're not searching for ghosts that they come find you. Trust me. It seems Dorchester Prison is truly rife with activity, but whether it's good or evil is anyone's guess. Many paranormal investigators have spent the night at the Stanley Hotel for obvious reasons. YouTuber Franco TV is one of them. Very soon into his stay, the spirits are speaking. I just heard something. I can't. They tell Franco what they need from him. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Seance. Seance. In another room, Franco hears something. I got the doors moving. Hello? Someone's in here. When he approaches the door, it moves. This door literally just moved. The thing is I have a night vision camera right on the other side watching. What is happening? You tell me. Another loud sound is heard on a still camera, though we can't see where it's coming from. He discovers who is at the Stanley with him. What is here with me? Or who is here with me? Sound like it said the captain. 
Flashing back to an old video, Franco is convinced he knows exactly who he's speaking to. That is the gentleman that haunts this floor. Mr. Dunraven. If you look right here, it says it even right there. And the Capitan doesn't seem to want him around. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the candle. I just had a door closed on me. Obviously, the Stanley Hotel's reputation holds up. After seeing this video, I want to know more about the Capitan and his unfinished business. Vorkuta was a coal mining settlement during the Soviet era. It has since become a semi-deserted wasteland. Published by Vagabond, this adventure seeker went to check out the ghost town at the end of the world. Here is roughly more than 200 people. On the background of such amount of abandoned buildings, an active mine looks surrealist. Traveling there by train, the only accessible means of transport to the area, he encounters the first steam engine that ever appeared in the area in 1944. The once thriving city was served by 13 coal mines in its heyday where workers received a good salary and twice the pay they might back home due to the added northern coefficient pay directly across from clean bright offices or empty derelict buildings. Other empty structures are topped with massive piles of snow. Atop an enormous nine-story building is a phrase that translates to glory to the conquerors of Arctic territories. Vagabond also takes in the coal miners' quarters, located on the Vorkuta River embankment. Would you be able to live in this half-abandoned Arctic town? You'd better learn to love the cold. Jal Bundy has caught some weird things on camera while exploring the forest outside of his village late at night. In front of them is the white outline of a phantom apparition that for some reason stands out against a backdrop of total darkness. When they rush towards the apparition, you can see it shrinks into a small ball of paranormal energy and disappears around the tree. Is this strange ball of light edited or really paranormal is what I want to know. I feel like this video could be real because it's late at night. They sound scared and those woods look scary too. Freaky, right? Oh man, I'm in a two-way tunnel right now, man. If you down now, don't do it! He's moving! He's moving! A YouTuber named Tristan R is trapped in a tunnel when he sees his worst fear creep across his visor, a spider. There's nowhere to pull over, so now he has to keep one eye on the spider to make sure it doesn't land on him, and one eye on the road to make sure he doesn't cause a pile up. He finally is able to get out and pull his visor down to show us a spider was in fact dangling over his lap by a thread this whole time. It might not look like much to most of you, but for anyone who has a major fear of spiders, it's large enough. He pulls away thinking that he's seen the last of them, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are hundreds more inside. A strange and mysterious sighting on a doorbell cam has left this Los Angeles resident frightened. Their 5am visitor is seen through and at times straight up invisible. Plus listen to how the audio skips when it passes by. Since paranormal energy is known to make cameras malfunction, I think this could be a real ghost sighting video. When a scary video isn't self-explanatory, it's time to break out some armchair detective work. But even if you're Sherlock or Enola Holmes, you'll have a tough time connecting the dots of this video. Published to YouTube in March of 2012, Ghosts Are Real 66 writes, Been taking video of local cemeteries for a while and examining them from frame to frame. Found the image of what looks like a ghost of a young boy from around the early 1900s by the way he is dressed. 
The video was taken at Kinder Cemetery, established in 1902. While scanning some tombstones at a distance, a distinct flash is caught on camera. While zooming in, you can make out a figure, although you can't really distinguish its dress. YouTuber Mainly Mainly says that he's wearing suspenders and a white shirt, but that's up for interpretation. Some think it's a reflection in a car window, others are sure it's the paranormal, and I'm leaning towards the latter. If you're feeling a presence in your basement, there's probably a reason. Published to YouTube in October of 2019, the uploader explains that this was the first footage she captured of a ghost on her laptop with Xbox One Kinect. She says other paranormal things occurred along with the Kinect footage, including her laptop's battery running out of juice quickly, and a plastic Walmart bag moving of its own accord, despite no draft being present. As the uploader demonstrates the Kinect's capabilities, it shows only her limb movement for a while. When she brings a doll lacking a head and places it on a rocking chair, something appears to be hovering by a bookshelf in the background, something with lime green energy. It remains there for a long while, but when the woman places the baby head on the door, a new Kinect figure appears right next to the rocker, or perhaps the same figure has moved. This time, its energy appears aqua. It remains there active for a very long time and then disappears at one point. When the woman walks past it to sit down on the couch, it doesn't again reappear. It's either about time to move or to throw out that doll, or both. A YouTuber named Matthew Van Hughes is enjoying nature when he hears a loud voice of someone who apparently isn't. Listen to this part and tell me if you can literally hear the word help being said because I think I can. The sound quiets down and then switches over to something far less human. Skeptics think that this is some kind of wild animal, but I think I can hear English being spoken here, but I can't tell what. Maybe the words don't take me. Let me know what you hear. When he gets to the bottom off the cliff, nothing is there. Matthew waits for an hour and doesn't hear anything else, so he leaves whatever it was to take their final breaths. Sky trumpets are literally trumpet sounds in the sky, and they are more common than you'd think. There have been reports of them all over the world, including Sri Lanka where this video is from. What is going on? I personally think it sounds like a foghorn of a boat, which wouldn't be out of the ordinary since they live on an island and there's fog outside, but emergency vehicles all seem to be hurrying to the same place, so something big is definitely going on. As night settles in, the scary noises from above only seem to be getting louder and more urgent. This next part is definitely not a boat, more like scary noises from a giant creature if anything. I really want to know what these strange sounds are, so tell me what you hear. Especially if you are from the island this video was taken on. There are mysterious happenings that can be explained, and others to which there is no answer. Guess which one this mystery is? Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by EBB Puzzleheaded, and originally published to YouTube by Daniel Robb. In May of 2020, these screams in the Texan night sky are sure to set your hair on end. In the clip, the uploader explains that there's a sound in the distance, screaming that seems to be coming from the sky, and you can regularly hear the eerie screech off and on for nearly 8 minutes. What is that bizarre sound? 
The uploader Daniel Robb says this happened between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. and that it sounded like a banshee, followed by several voices whooping. He says the sound filled the entire night sky. Others in the comments agree that it's demonic or banshee-esque, citing the end of times. Redditor I have no purpose in life notes that the screams occur alongside the lightning strikes and wonders if they might be interconnected. I guess we may never know the actual answer. While driving over a long period of time, it wouldn't be unusual to hallucinate a sighting on the side of the road, a deer or a cow perhaps, but might an entire car full of people see the same hallucination at once? While driving in the Philippines, a group including actress Myrtle Sorosa was traveling across what the narrator describes as a far-flung area. They had to take an alternative route from the original as one was flooded while another was shut down due to a landslide. After enough road was cleared to cross, they traveled across the mainly deserted, uninhabited area. No street lamps some trees but mainly just road. It was after midnight when, out of nowhere, they saw it. <laughs> what appeared to be a 10-year-old child wearing a bluish-white shirt crouched in the middle of the road with his arms and hands covering his face. An uproar can be heard on the video as they pass the figure, and most of the people in the car claim to have seen the boy. They wanted to stop and return, but the area was unsafe, so they decided to watch the dash cam footage to make sure that their eyes weren't deceiving them. The footage showed a white blob-like orb figure appear and then quickly vanish. The driver believed the spirit they saw was of a child who had his life taken by a typhoon. According to one passenger, if he was really just a spirit, I hope he can find rest. If he was really a child, my conscience will forever haunt. A YouTube channel called The Scories has been receiving constant harassment from Project Zorgo for some time now. Nobody knows exactly what Project Zorgo wants from them, so they teamed up with some other YouTubers who have been targeted as well to get to the bottom of the situation. It isn't long before they find a mysterious folder on their laptop that none of them have ever seen before. Obviously, it was placed there recently by somebody who wanted it to be discovered. The title of the folder is simply called Hacker. They are afraid to click on the folder at first, but finally they decide that it must be done if they want to solve anything. Inside are a bunch of aerial photos taken of them a long time ago. That is so weird. That's literally we're vlogging right there. Look, it's moving, it's moving, it's Wait, moving. What? If this is real, then it's clear Project Zorgo has been watching them for quite some time. As if this wasn't enough, Project Zorgo has since demonstrated its ability to take complete control over their channel whenever they want. We have successfully taken control of the Scories channel. You will only be able to watch the videos we allow you to watch. Exactly what Project Zorgo has in store for this channel is anyone's guess, but based on their past activity, I doubt it's anything good. An unknown creature has been caught on camera in the sky of all places. What is this? What the f is this thing in the air? A stunned woman begins to question her life and her sanity upon recording a creature with tentacle-like appendages flapping about in mid-air. She's parked on the far end of a not-so-busy lot, so that explains the general lack of other witnesses. I'm pretty sure this creature sighting's not real because this is the only video I could find of it. It would be hard to miss a giant creature wiggling in the skyline like this, so you would think there would be more. My best guess is they've superimposed video of a jellyfish or some other deep sea creature over the sky to create this monster, but I'm not a special effects expert so who knows. 
Randy films his cat taking a midday snooze when something creepy moves overhead. I would say this is just a particle of dust except the cat sees it too and bolts upstairs like it's one of the scariest moments it's ever had in all of its nine lives. Something makes the cat open its eyes. It senses something is wrong. Then an apparent ghost orb floats by and suddenly the cat no longer wants to be in the same room anymore. Skeptics I'm sure will be quick to point out that the cat could have been startled by the camera. That's a good point except cats usually don't run in fear from their owner. This cat seems to have felt the presence of something, a feline sixth sense of sorts, and it doesn't stick around. The surveillance footage was taken from the Helmut Carr College in South Africa. A strange mist appears in the far doorway and slowly morphs into the shape of a girl wearing a long dress. She casually walks into a nearby classroom as if this was just another ordinary school day, except of course the room is empty and no one is in the building. Even though this is called Helmut Carr College, it's actually just a high school and this phantom-like figure does appear to be around the same size as an average student. This makes me think it could possibly be real, though I guess they could have just edited this girl into the video if they really wanted to. A YouTuber named Outdoors with Eric patrols his property at night because he suspects a mysterious creature in the woods. It's a scary exploration and a creepy location for sure, but Eric wants to get as much evidence on camera as he can, so he keeps his fear in check and marches forward. At 1 minute and 43 seconds, he hears some really scary noises coming from the woods. I don't know what kind of creature would be up late at night screaming in the darkness. What does it sound like to you? Yeah. He walks for another minute until the scary noises give him pause again, much louder and closer this time. Man, you guys hear that? He feels watched and zooms in close with his night vision camera. You can barely make out the shape of a creature at first, so let me point it out for you. That is bizarre. When he plays with the setting, he gets a much better sighting on the creature and soon discovers there are two of them across the stream. They're coming closer. Two dots in the distance mark where he thinks they are. The screaming creatures of the night. No doubt they are real and so are the scary noises. But the real question is, what are they? A photographer is under a bridge when he records what he calls a strange creature. Confused, he goes over to the spot and the mysterious figure is nowhere to be found. This supposedly unexplained sighting looks pretty good at first and had some people freaking out. With that said, one zoomed in. This video appears to be an up-close encounter of the CGI kind because the creature's feet hardly seem to touch the ground as it walks. Though if this was real and you saw it, what do you think you would do? This ghost is trying to bum a ride. Posted by Ghost Videos in July of 2020. A man was driving in Johor, Malaysia when he crossed paths with a hitchhiking spirit. The dash cam footage shows a dark empty room at night. According to the timestamp, it's around 2 in the morning in July of 2019. As the car barrels down the road, a semi-transparent figure appears in the dark lane on the right. You can barely make out the apparition as it holds out its thumb to catch a ride. What do you think? A live person half hidden in the darkness? Hitchhiking in the darkness of night? If so, what is the spirit's destination? We may never know. This Aztec wind instrument has been terrifying people for hundreds of years, and you're about to be next. The noise is supposed to replicate your final screams and is even said to haunt your dreams. Listen to this and tell me how stressed out it makes you, if at all. Here it is again, this time in a professional recording studio to get the full effect. 
I definitely can hear how this sounds like someone screaming for their life. Can you? A man in an undisclosed city hears this noise and begins recording. He sounds like he has anxiety from hearing this noise. And then later in the video, you learn something very strange. Yet again, I can hear that uh, echoing sound, uh, that eerie sound again today. So obviously, that has been going on for some time. However, nobody else around him seems to be upset or alarmed from the noise. Maybe this is some kind of ordinary city sound, and the uploader is pretending to be afraid as a prank. For those of you who have lived in a large city, what is this noise, and why would you hear it on and off for months on end? This most haunted hospital in Guadalajara carries an evil energy, and this crew is there to investigate it. When they turn down a dark hallway, they appear to see some movement. Things intensify as they start to hear noises in the hospital. They walk down the hallway and come across a creepy surgical room. Mira esto. They feel a presence in the chapel. Que son utilizados, bueno, para parte de esto, pero para otras cosas más, más pesadas. Si escucha esa voz, muchas veces no lo quiero decir porque espero que la gente lo diga, pero si lo escuché, tú lo escuchaste. Then they hear something unexpected. Jamás, ¿dónde está el perro? Yo me imaginé que venía detrás. Is that Cujo? They seem to hear something in this room. Later, they walk down the hallway into a room where many people say they feel anguish. The woman also explains why they light candles to spirits instead of offering up their own energy. Yo siempre ofrezco mi energía, la verdad. Eso no es bueno, ¿qué me puedes decir eso? No. Well, I didn't see anything terrifying on this hospital tour. I do feel the energy being sucked out of me just watching this. Do you feel the same? It's almost 3 a.m. and Sean Tharp's girlfriend is heading out to work a late night shift. Soon she is calling her boyfriend, screaming about a man walking towards her. She claims the stranger was wearing no coat, in absolutely freezing cold weather, and came straight at her without a word. Sure enough, at approximately 33 seconds into this doorbell cam video, I can see a semi-transparent figure stomping towards her car at a high rate of speed, then it turns around and abruptly disappears. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then watch this street lamp get covered briefly by the person's hollow outline as a reference point. These tourists left with a souvenir they didn't want. Published by Mystic House slash Horror Stories, this scary video was reportedly captured at a popular tourist attraction in Indonesia. Amongst the brambles on a jungle path, a creepy creature is spotted peering out from behind a stone. The humanoid-looking creature's head is adorned with strange ram-like horns. Its skin is a dull gray, its eyes heavily shadowed. 
Is this just a local having fun with the tourists? Or is this evidence of an unknown species lurking in the wilderness? This footage, published by Paranormal World in August of 2019, shows a scenic mountain and forest opposite an overpass. After completing a full 360 to take it all in, the camera falls to the cars whizzing past below before returning to the mountain. This time, the mountain isn't the only thing carving out the sky. A Godzilla-like creature peeks out from behind the mountain. At first, one might mistake it for the mountain itself, but it slowly begins to move, voiding that theory. While many in the comments say this is a good edit, some are more concerned by the man's reaction. YouTuber Dap writes, if there is a Godzilla, you are running, not chewing gum. That's probably true, although other people note that the creature is friendly, so perhaps the cameraman had no need to fear him. Still, seeing a creature the size of a mountain would probably get your heart pumping friendly or not. A team of ghost hunters are using a modified Kinect camera to capture paranormal presence in the historic Houghton Mansion in North Adams, Massachusetts. It was once owned by a wealthy businessman, but has since been converted to a Masonic temple and is believed to be haunted by otherworldly spirits. The person in green is one of the hunters, but listen to what they hear. You can really hear the voice when you put headphones on. Anyway, I think this video is real because in fake videos, they tend to talk one at a time and not all at once. But in this video, everybody convincingly talks over each other and reacts with genuine surprise. I'd like to hear what you think though. While hiking in the forest at night, TikToker Isaiah Harris 333 and his cousin, Wyoming 6.0, encountered something truly terrifying. First, they hear it. You didn't hear that. There's something under there. Bro. And when they investigated the tunnel under the bridge, this is what they found. <sighs> what was that? It looks like an extraterrestrial creature to me, and one I wouldn't get an inch closer to. Isaiah tagged me in a second post, in which the creature seems to be stalking them. Do you see it peeking from around the tree? Here's a closer look. I'm not sure if this is the same creature as the one under the bridge, or if the wilderness of Wyoming is chock full of terror, but most in the comments think the cousins are dealing with a rake. Oh my gosh. Dude, hold on. Let me go first. Let me go first. I tend to agree, either that or a skinwalker. A YouTuber named Low Tech is a racing enthusiast who finds himself running from the cops after a drag race goes wrong. Here you can see his opponent pulls over while Low Tech decides to keep going, or at least that's what I think is happening. Let me know if you see something different. Low Tech turns the corner and quickly hides behind the dumpster of a warehouse. He stays there for an hour before escaping with his freedom. After watching this video, I certainly think he could have gotten in trouble for posting the video online. Though, considering the video is from 2017, 
It appears Low Tech didn't get in trouble for the footage. There's a YouTube channel called Happy Life that ironically explores some of the most miserably haunted places in all of Pakistan. Happy Life began as a spiritual advice channel, and now they hope to better understand the darker side of spirituality through paranormal investigations like this one. This time, the Happy Life crew intends to check out a haunted school where numerous students were said to have lost their lives. Early on, they encounter a poltergeist who is intent on chasing them away. The first encounter sounds like it's throwing plates, but then it graduates to a heavy bottle that could have really done them harm. Doors also repeatedly close as if something really doesn't want them to go any further. But the more I look at it, the more I think the cameraman is responsible for all of this rather than a ghost. The objects always just so happen to be thrown from the cameraman's direction, a strange coincidence, and the camera person always seems to be within arm's reach whenever the doors close, so I think he is either kicking it or else pushing it shut with his free hand. But when they get to the very top of the school, they find this mysterious red streak of dried up liquid overlooking the balcony. So even though parts of this video may have possibly been embellished, perhaps a student really did lose their life here after all. The situation only gets weirder when they come across a star in the hall that could have been used as a ritual or simply drawn by them to make the video scarier. I think it could be real though, because look what happens soon after one of them kneels in the middle. The way it echoes down the hall sounds forcefully loud and possibly real. One of them explores a room, while the other records from outside the window. No one else is nearby, so then tell me who is responsible for what happens next. They decide the inside is too dangerous to go any further and stick to the outer perimeter. Eventually, they come across a shallow well that gives off a residual negative energy that could be left over from a terrible and tragic event. Something compels them to climb inside, and sure enough the dirt has been freshly disturbed. An orb passes left to right over the small grave as he plucks this fragment of human and holds it to the camera. What is it like to have a bad encounter with a demon? You're about to find out. Published by Dark Life in December of 2021, this ghost hunter is thrown from above and not so politely asks why he came. When he asks who she is, she responds, and when he later asks that she state her name, her real voice comes out. Later, when no one is answering him, he hears a noise coming from the next room, and that something appears to get aggressive with him, pulling him to the ground. That's when his battery runs out. Did he make it out alive? Well, this video did make its way online, but let's say only the demon knows for sure. Is this the trail of a ghost? Post it to the r slash ghosts subreddit. Jen the Hab explains, My dad took a video of a helium balloon floating around the house to scare my kids, but captured something else. The video shows the helium balloon in question, drifting in the corner of the room. As it floats there, suddenly a white, unidentifiable object flies forward and another swings past. According to Jen the Hab, her father didn't see the wisp until he watched the video back. Redditor Mr. Blistered Lips writes, 
If not paranormal, I'd suggest a flash from reflected sunlight off of a car outside hitting the lens, but the Redditor counters that. According to her, the back deck looks over a conservation area where no cars pass. While well, some viewers still insist it's a reflection, others think something is definitely moving in front of the camera. But is it paranormal? What is your wild guess? Personally, I'm going with the first option. 30-year-old Alexa was returning to her Bronx home in University Heights when she got that feeling in the pit of her stomach. She detailed what happened to her in a Twitter thread in September of 2018 noting that she wrote the thread to warn women in her neighborhood to be aware that this person is out there. Alexa said she was returning home by Uber at 3.50 a.m., heading to the lobby of her building, when she got a strange feeling that she wasn't alone, as she suspected, and the building security footage confirmed she wasn't. A man had followed her through the courtyard outside and quickened his pace to enter the lobby right behind her. Alexa notes in the thread that she didn't see or hear the man watching her. When she was in the lobby, she realized there was a figure hovering outside the front door, waiting in the first entryway. She decided to double check the door locked behind her. She turned to the door to shut and lock it and noticed he had his foot on the corner, ensuring the door didn't close after she entered. She notes that the man likely intended to confront her outside the building, which is why he didn't enter the lobby all the way, or he was waiting for her to head toward her apartment so he could run after her and force his way in. Don't worry, he didn't have a chance. Alexa shut the door, moving his foot out of the way to do so. Unfortunately, the suspect had a scarf wrapped around his face to ensure he wouldn't be identified by security cameras. She notes that drivers should always wait until their passengers reach their front door safely. In her case, the Uber driver left when she got out of the vehicle. Alexa also remarks that, without the security footage to back her claim, her story would undoubtedly have been questioned and disbelieved. These stories should always be listened to and heard. And above all, as Alexa did, always trust your gut. A YouTuber named Gothboy Prince is playing with a Ouija board that refuses to cooperate with the camera. Apparently, the pointer moves on its own, but only when he's not recording. Hello? Knocking on the Ouija board isn't the only way he shows disrespect. He tries to badmouth the spirit into moving the pointer on camera for proof. I think you're a coward. That's what I think it is. I think you're nothing but a coward. Less than 10 seconds later, he gets a silent reply. At one point, Gothboy Prince hears a noise and looks up. You can see that he's sitting in bed with the Ouija board on his lap. There's absolutely no room for anyone to be controlling the pointer with a magnet from underneath, so that explanation is out. You can also see that he is alone and no one is in front of him pulling a string. As if all of this weren't already bizarre enough. You see this? The pointer moves too frequently and in too many different directions to be done with a string, which by the way would be clearly visible from this close of a distance away. Even paranormal skeptics can't explain how this pointer was able to move with no one nearby. But if you think you can, I would really like to hear the real reason. This young YouTuber had just begun her channel when something horrific put a stop to it. Shared by YouTube channel EXTV, this scary video is currently trending. In the Brazilian YouTube community, the YouTuber had experienced paranormal happenings in her home before, including sounds on the rooftop, mysterious lights, and moans in the house, but she had yet to capture anything on camera. Until now, as she introduces herself and her channel, something else introduces itself behind her. After the camera goes dark, the monster escapes to the rooftop. Papa! Oh, mira, mira! Dios mío, ¿qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? But it doesn't stop there.
What is this demon? It looks like something nightmares are made of, and maybe it is, but just like your nightmares, it isn't real. After digging further, I found the video's original source is Nicaraguan CGI channel JJPD Producciones, although this may just be CGI. I don't know how this channel mined and illustrated something straight from my nightmares. An outdoor restaurant is about to be creepy, and it's all caught on CCTV tape. This top right couple seems to be having an intense conversation. At 10 seconds, there is some chest pounding on both sides. It looks like a bad breakup or something until 25 seconds when he stands up and is ready to storm out but then points at the food lodged in his throat. They weren't having an argument at all. He was slowly becoming more and more unable to breathe. She starts patting him on the back but apparently this is a big mistake. I am not giving any medical advice but the Mayo Clinic says not to do this unless you're trained to deliver a special back blow between the shoulder blades. From what I've read, patting someone on the back can sometimes make the food move further down the windpipe and get even more stuck. A brave restaurant worker gets behind him, makes a fist with one hand slightly above the belly button, grabs his fist and gives a quick upward thrust as if picking him off the ground for a moment. This is called the Heimlich Maneuver, and it's a good thing somebody in the restaurant knew it. Most states have laws in place for restaurant staff to have this kind of training, and this scary scenario caught on tape is exactly why. I encourage everyone to get the proper training because you never know when this could happen to someone nearby, maybe even you. There must be no scarier feeling than having an entire crowd watch you helplessly while you can't breathe. This man who helped him is truly a hero. Captured at nearly 2am, this security footage left behind a phantom trace. Published by Highlight Seed in March of 2022, the mysterious video shows a couple of figures crossing along the dirt road outside of a compound. The first figure is solid. You can tell it's a human person making their way in the night. The second figure, however, Although this one too is carrying a flashlight, the figure never appears solid in form, and halfway down the path, he seems to evaporate upward into the air. Both he and his flashlight beam disappear. Does the contrast between the two figures prove that one is not what it seems, or are our eyes deceiving us? Old ship vessels are often known for their ghostly secrets. After all, they've seen the greatest evils on Earth in the name of battle. Published to YouTube in February of 2013, the ghost activity abroad this Navy ship, the USS Hornet, originally aired on DE episode 32. The crew member can be heard explaining how to use the EVP when in the background of his discussion with the newbie, you can hear a strange voice, one that sounds like a little girl. Alright, if you'd like to speak to us. It's hard to tell what the girl is saying without the voice being isolated in the audio file, although YouTube commenters have their theories. YouTuber Madcaps and Nemo's writes, It sounds like she said, Can you tell me why they forgot me? Others hear, Do you think they know they got me? Some simply hear, Play with me. What do you hear? Alright, if you'd like to speak to us. Tim Morozov, or Tim Frost in English, is a Russian YouTuber who goes into places that spirits want him to stay out of. This time, he has his eyes on an entire village that's been evacuated due to the presence of something mysterious, something neither you nor I can see. He picks the creepiest, most haunted looking cabin of them all, and unlike most ghost hunters, sets up high quality lighting to catch every last detail. It isn't long before Tim Frost thinks he sees a mist floating before his very eyes, but to be honest, I don't see anything. That mirror, on the other hand, is hard to miss. 
Tim takes it off the wall and is busy inspecting it with what sounds like beads falling off a necklace hit the floor from behind. If this is fake, then someone must have climbed the cabin and poured something onto the roof to create the sound, but that still doesn't explain what happens next. A ghost brushes by and hits the microphone of his camera at 12 minutes and 3 seconds. The mic moves by itself in everything, or maybe Tim's just slightly shaking it to create the illusion of movement. Then his light short circuits, unless, that is, he hits the strobe effect and then turns it off himself. Tim Frost knows that he has to explore the entire cabin, and that includes the basement. He takes the freaky mirror down there with him and starts snapping pictures with an old Polaroid camera for evidence. That's when a brick falls near him. There's a good chance he placed it there himself, because this ledge is an odd place for a brick to just so happen to be perched upon. But right as I say I notice an orb fly over the brick right as it falls, so now I'm back to thinking it could be real and paranormal. Tim Frost unfortunately gets chased out by locals before he can gather much more evidence. He returns on a different day and selects another cabin. This one happens to still have power, which is odd, but I guess the electrical company could have made a mistake and not switched it off yet. Anyway, at 3 minutes and 45 seconds, he records this strange flickering white light against the wall. It stays with him for more than a minute, but then, at 6 minutes and 10 seconds, it goes away, almost like it goes into the next room, and then this happens. <laughs> Suddenly, the lights go out and Tim finds himself alone in the dark, or so he thinks. He uses an EMF meter to track something moving around with him, and when he hones in on its exact position, his lights start messing up. Also, an eerie mist is visible around his flashlight, but maybe it's dust. He follows the EMF meter up to an attic. His flashlight is flickering badly now even though it was a solid beam only minutes before. What he hears next is not fake in my opinion. Too light to be a person, and yet all too near. In fact, it sounded like it was this door. But when he looks inside for himself, nothing is there. And get this, the flashlight of his camera is not the last of his lighting problems that night. When he set up his professional studio lights, lights that he's never had a problem with before, they can't seem to stay on either. I would say that this was from faulty wiring with the cabin, but I think this light is running on its own battery and isn't plugged in at all. Paranormal Explorers Moxley of Moxley's Crazy Adventures and Dan of Nighthawk Exploring team up to explore an abandoned house so haunted that only two well-versed paranormal investigators such as themselves could ever hope to stand a chance against it. Known only as the Invisible House, the haunted place in the UK is host to ghastly figures and ghostly apparitions that will make your skin crawl as they reach out and brush by. While exploring the second floor, they pass by a small statue kneeling in prayer. The way of faces into the room makes me think it was left there to protect against something inside, a paranormal presence that doesn't want them in there exploring the abandoned house at all. Somewhere nearby a door closes all by itself, and when you slow down the video at 6 minutes and 4 seconds, there is a half-concealed outline of a pale ghost face in the window.
not knowing that they've already caught a ghost sighting on tape. They break out the K2 meter to get supernatural consent for their paranormal investigation to continue. Are you okay with myself and Moxley being here? Can you take it to the yellow or orange? Would you be okay if myself and Moxley used a spirit box in here? No. Give it a go. Mm -hmm. Give it a go. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. A chill passes over them, and just like the legends say, the ghost hunters hear and feel a presence brushed by them both. They turn around to find this heavy cabinet door, which was open when they first came in, is now closed. They open and close the cabinet to see how heavy it is, and conclude that it is too heavy to close on its own from a gentle breeze. And get this, every time they touch the cabinet door, a ghost orb angrily flies overhead. It happens three times and it's quite creepy. Ivan Dragunov stands at the top of the stairs, leading down to his basement and says something in a language I can't understand. Try to translate what he says, and more importantly, tell me if you can hear a brief whisper echoing all around him. Okay, Tukima Duhoe. At the bottom of the stairs, something unseen fills Ivan with dread, and he can't seem to catch his breath. He tries to run, but fear overrides the signal and his feet stand still. The room is cast into a heavy silence until whatever is watching him finally moves forward. <sighs> You never get to see it, but whatever was down there sounds quite large and coming from the other side of the room, so it's very unlikely that Ivan was making the noise himself. Oh, and something tells me he won't be finding the courage to change the light bulb down there for a long time. A paranormal investigator named Jeff Stetix World walks into an abandoned house through a door that was kicked open long ago. An old woman once lived here, and all of her possessions are still inside, mostly very various clothing items and trinkets, and quite a few photos. He is looking at two black and white pictures of a boy, perhaps a grandchild or a son, when he hears a faint sound coming from further down the hall. He detects nothing with his untrained eye, but as his camera adjusts to the darkness, it does pick up a small outline pressed up against the wall. Perhaps the very same boy in the pictures he was just observing. All of this escapes him as he calmly exits, completely unaware of the boy cloaked darkness just one room away. Submitted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by Crystal Hill 0193 this redditor wrote, Checking out an abandoned school when we were chased out. Let's watch their submission and see what they're talking about. There was certainly some debate about this video in the comments. Lit underscore FUS 3D wrote, Scared out, I'd say. To which the uploader responded saying, We were on the highest floor, nobody was above us, but yet it came from above us, and when we got out of the building we heard footsteps running at us. Perhaps there was someone else in the building that day, and they weren't expecting visitors. Or perhaps this abandoned school truly is haunted. Which side are you on here? Let me know in the comments. This next one will make anyone terrified of exploring the backwoods ever again. Redditor Mutt Magician shares this pair of creepy videos to Reddit. He writes, I was in the backwoods of Oklahoma when I found a random shed full of children's clothes and dolls. Unfortunately, this was all I filmed. The video shows a doll missing a leg and with its head and arms discolored with dirt. It seems like the doll is quite fragile because he breaks it with a small squeeze.
The Redditor writes that after finding the doll, he explored further and found an abandoned shed with children's clothes, dolls, and backpacks. In a follow-up video, the Redditor takes viewers to where he found this abandoned shed. For some reason, I kept expecting a jump scare in this follow-up. Well, I didn't jump, I think this is incredibly scary. What were these dolls there for? Why were they in such disrepair? I have so many questions about this one, and very few answers. The Mikey Mike channel encounters a bizarre sighting in the clear blue sky that leaves him freaked out. The creepy moments were also caught on dash cam, so we can have a look too. One word, in case you missed it, I'll give it to you again right now. It's easy. E A S Y. Now what you want to do is take that code word easy and text that. What the hell? Where the f that just come from? A bolt of lightning touches down on a sunny day, no rain, hardly any clouds in the sky, and the few hanging around have not even a touch of gray. There's no clouds here. Look, no clouds. I like just came from space. Mikey can't shake the feeling that he's seen something he was never meant to see. This video got me curious, and I was able to find a second one like it, half as long and twice as weird. Oh, I hope I got that that time. I don't know if I did or not. It's in the corner over here. At one second, a flash of lightning touches down without intersecting with a cloud at all. It seems to just literally come out of the blue. I looked up what this was and came across a term called dry lightning that I have heard before but never really studied in depth. This is a name for what happens when precipitation evaporates really fast. It's technically raining, but we just don't notice because rain doesn't reach the ground, but lightning does. These two videos basically mean you can get struck down by a random bolt at any time, even on a nice day. There really is no safe time to stand under trees or by anything metal when you consider that this is apparently a common phenomenon. You might have almost gotten struck by lightning plenty of times without even noticing it because it's silent and you probably weren't looking up. Freaky, right? Juan Mendez is a YouTuber who is unafraid to put his life on the line in the name of a paranormal investigation. And as this video goes to show, ready to explore the scariest local legends he can find, one such legend revolves around a dismal force known only as La Sinjora Fantisma or the Ghost Lady. The Ghost Lady is said to still roam the home she passed away in years ago. In life, she earned a reputation. As a taker of lives and lived a wicked existence full of hatred until the very end, her spirit is said to still reflect in the bathroom mirror. If you go in there and call upon her for an unholy visit, which is tonight's goal, they start by rather rudely calling her name outside of the property, hoping to get her to come through the window. She doesn't appear, so they step inside. The place has been stripped bare, but overall it looks somewhat inhabitable, at least as far as abandoned places go, but it's more about the way it feels than its aesthetics. Something about the small and cramped space that feels ill-fitting and all wrong, like nothing good has ever happened here, and only unimaginable horrors can befall anyone foolish enough to stay inside. They creep their way to the room where her legendary mirror hangs unblemished amidst the clutter. Luan stands alone while his friends keep watch. His tone is expectant and again, not very polite as he addresses the infamous ghost lady in more of a challenge than a request. They are all about to leave, but they decide to try to turn on the shower just to see what happens. To their surprise, clean water drips out of a rusty pipe that shouldn't work and doesn't even have a shower head. This was probably where she hung what was left of the lives she took, upside down and filleted open to drain in the shower. Seeing this broken shower work again shortly after doubling her powers makes them rethink their situation and wonder if they should have taken a nicer tone. But that doesn't matter because it's too late now. 
They are walking towards the exit and everything seems much more negative and dreadful than the first time around, more of a feeling than anything else, as if a great evil has awoken and is spreading across the otherwise plain walls. And that's when she appears, not when Luan tells her to, nor in the mirror where she's supposed to be according to legend, but maybe that's the entire point. Her house, her rules. They hole up in the room for a while and discuss what to do, but the situation takes care of itself by the time they open the door. The lady seems to have proven her point that she is real and vanishes just as quickly as she came. This video would be easy enough to fake because realistically speaking, all they would need is for an older woman to stand in the doorway, which coincidentally is a lot easier to do than actually using special effects to get her into the mirror. For these reasons, I think this video might not be real, but that doesn't necessarily mean the legend itself isn't true or that something else wasn't watching them from the shadows all along. Thank you so much for getting me to 50,000 subscribers here on my clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Let's get to 60,000 subscribers next. Thank you.